Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the very first episode of Catching Up with the Corn Dogs. I'm Andrew Mild, the host of this show. And what this podcast is about is me sitting down with coaches and players that will be on the very first Lake County Corn Dogs team. So I get to know them, and you, the fans, can also get to know them for the season. And on the very first episode, we sat down with former Midwest Collegiate League champion Justin Heisman and got to know him and see what he's about and what kind of mentality he'll bring in as the first manager of this ball club. And with that, let's meet Justin Heisman. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the very first episode of the Lake County Baseball Podcast. I'm Andrew Mild. Enjoy me today is manager of the team, Justin Heisman. How you doing, Coach? I'm good, Andrew. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, Coach, it's it's the winter time. Christmas just ended, and you're in the early stages of developing a, a, the first ever Lake County baseball roster. So, what goes into your thought process when creating a roster? Is it more pitch heavy? Is it more hitter heavy? What are you looking for? Well, you're fielding an entire team. Uh, so you're pretty much looking for everything. So you kind of have to go into it uh, knowing what positions, you know, not necessarily are more important, but in numbers, uh, how much you want for each position, knowing that that roster could change a lot in between now and when the summer begins. And even during the summer, just because these are college players, uh, they have their own personal goals that they have with their teams. So their coaches have goals for them. And also things change in the spring. Guys get injured or, you know, some pitchers all of a sudden go, oh, hey, I didn't expect to throw 150 innings in a few months, I need a break, um, you know, so stuff like that can happen, uh, but you definitely go into it uh, with a certain uh, goal with, with each position, um, obviously pitcher heavy, just to make sure you have those numbers because you kind of have to have the arms to, to play a season. So uh, yeah, we're in the beginning stages of filling a roster, but so far so good. And we're excited about it. So uh, you, you're recruiting these guys, you're bringing them in and you said like injuries happen, guys maybe work more than they usually would. Does that mean you have to over recruit? Because I know it's a roster of 32. So does that mean you have to aim for a number beyond that just in case those circumstances do arise after the spring ends? No, you really can't do that just because what if, right? Um, right. If, if I go out there and, and you know, say yes and, and commit and sign contracts for 12 outfielders and all 12 come, uh, then they're going to be a lot of unhappy players, right? Uh, who are going to want to leave or, or just uh, not get the playing time that they deserve and need uh, to reach their goals for what they want to get out of the summertime. So um, you, you still have to go into it going, okay, when that's filled, that's filled. And then if a spot opens up, you kind of keep those guys on your list and you follow up and say, Hey, you still need a place to go. And you know, you kind of want to be respectful and professional in the process. Right. Well, so what is your vision for this team? I know it's the first year squad and uh, trying to fill out this this roster and no one's ever heard of uh, this Lake County Baseball Club because, again, it's just starting out. So what is your vision for this first year? Well, just because it's first year doesn't mean you can't uh, win ball games and win a championship. We did that with the Oilmen, and, and it's an our girl right. season when I was there um, managing them in the first season of the league and, and the Oilmen. Um, you know, it's summer ball, so everybody's looking for a place to play and really – you know, most of the guys, are, they're, they're concerned about location <clears throat> and they're also concerned about talent. You know, am I going to be playing some good competition? Um, and we can say yes to both those things, you know, where, hey, it's a good location for you, you know, um, or if you're out of town or if we have host families for you, you know, we can take care of you. Crown Point's a great place to, to, to live for a, for a summer right. and play ball. I mean, so there's a lot of positives you can you can tell these guys and hopefully a good coaching staff you know, is enticing to them as well um, to know that they're in good hands and uh, can hopefully learn a few things over the summertime and to help them go back to their their teams and do well in the fall. Uh, so we have all those th things that we can push. And uh, so far, a lot of the guys are really excited about it and uh, the opportunities they can have here playing in Crown Point. Well, now we're going to dive into your background because you already talked about uh, <laughs> managing the, the oil men. But before that, you were a pretty good reliever in your day with Ole Miss setting their record. And then you were drafted by the Colorado Rockies. So spending time in professional baseball with not just the Rockies and the Royals, how do you think that experience helps you with you being a manager? Well, you know, I've been in this game a pretty long time, right? Yeah. Uh, played at pretty much every level possible. Um, so you kind of pull from everywhere you've been. I actually played in the Northwood Summer League and Cape Cod Summer League as well. 
so coaching in a summer league, you know, I, I really pull on those experiences from those two leagues, especially because those are pretty top tier leagues in, in college baseball. Uh, so I know what I, I, my experiences were like and what I was hoping to get out of it and, and uh, just try to give these guys, you know, similar things where um, even though I'm not their main coach, you know, I'm not going to be a guy that's going to come mess with them too much. Right. Just kind of help them and, and give them little tidbits of information that don't go against what they're learning with their college coaches and try to just, you know, give them a place that's fun, a fun atmosphere, you know, that where there is pressure, but it's also fun. Um, but also really trying to get something out of it fundamentally or mentally, you know, um, and that's like you said, I, I, you know, pitched for the Rockies and Royals organizations and, and at Ole Miss. So I had a lot of good coaches, um, but I've also had some bad coaches. Right. And so I, I tried to learn from both areas to, to give these guys the best possible experience for the summer. And, and that's the question that you, you mentioned about being the summer coach. Is your goal to win or is it to improve the players that are trying to get where you were, which was very successful college career and then get drafted and get picked up by a major league team? That is the challenge. Um, obviously you want to win, right? Um, it's fun to have a team that wins. It's fun for the town to watch a, a winning ball club. Um, a championship ball club, but at the same time, if if that is your all your goal as a coach and it, you're in it for yourself a little bit, or you make it all about business and all about winning, the players don't like that. Um, right. But you know, so they they want they want to win too, right? I mean, it's all, it's always fun to be on a winning team and not a team that's getting your brains beat in every night. Um, so you got to try to find that happy medium where um, you might take a couple of losses from time to time just to make sure some guys get some work, you know, who might not be your best options. Um, that is a part of it, but um, at the same time, you know, you are trying to put a championship ball club together that can right. give this town something exciting to watch. So it is a happy, I don't want to say medium, you know, but it is something that you got to take into consideration and try to be a coach that these players respect and that, that I'm not in it for myself or my personal goals. I'm here in it for these guys so that they can grow. Well, you talked about how you try to be a, a nice fun manager and you try to help these guys improve, but I'm, I'm always curious to see what uh, coaches have to say when I ask this question. And what is your biggest pet peeve as a manager? What is something you cannot stand that just drives you crazy when you see it? From other managers or from myself? <laughs> for, uh, for, like, for like, from what you see from your players. If you see a player doing it, you have to call them out on it. And it, it just drives you crazy because you can't stand it. Well, I used to always tell my guys, you know, I am a laid back coach. But at the same time, I respect the game just as much as anybody else. I mean, so for me, uh, laziness or just not respecting the game or your teammates can, can really drive me nuts. You know, I, I don't like those me guys. Um, even if you're the best player in the field and everybody knows that you can still carry yourself with respect and put in the work, um, you know, and, uh, respect the game in that, in that aspect where you're going to put the work in and, and be good to your teammates, respect your managers, your coaches, you know, not belittling anybody. Uh, for me, right. it's, you know, I always did my talking with my bat and my glove, you know, and that's what my, how my dad raised me. And that's what I always tried to do. Um, and hopefully guys respected me in the process because I didn't make it about myself. You know, even though I have my, I had my personal goals and I always wanted to achieve them. Um, you, you know, you can tell when guys carry themselves in that way um, or they're just lazy and trying to get their natural ability to get them to the highest level. Right. Um, right. You know, you don't get a lot of respect from your teammates that way. And, yeah, for me, um, yeah, yeah, yes, but a pet peeve. If, if there's guys that are being lazy on the field, mentally, physically, uh, just not giving their all, um, you know, you can have fun and still work hard, right? Uh, right. So, for, yeah, for me, it's really just about respecting the game. And it is a game where if you, you don't respect it, eventually it'll catch up to you. All right, so I have a, I have a fun question for you. So uh, Hall of Fame pitcher Tom Seaver uh, wrote this book back in the 70s about how he would attack different Hall of Fame hitters and the most famous one was Babe Ruth. So I'm curious with you being a pitcher in the major leagues, how would you pitch the Babe Ruth if you had the opportunity? Make him hit oppo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you look at those old timer swings, you know, their, their balance wasn't, wasn't great. You know, a little bit of flying open type deal and any good hitter, any good pitcher knows if, if you get that front shoulder or front hit opening up too early and just trying to hit, you know, 500 feet pull shots, Low and away all day, you know, right. low and away all day. And hopefully that umpire is giving me that call. <laughs> are, are you going to be throwing Babe Ruth fastballs? Or are you going to be uh, sprinkling in some circle changeups and uh, <laughs> some other, maybe I don't know your pitch repertoire as well as you do, but I, I knew I saw a picture with you, a fastball, obviously in the circle change. What else did you have a slider and a curve? 
I was a sinker slider guy. Yeah. Change up occasionally. You know, it's funny. I, when, I think one of my cards has this change up grip in it. And yeah. it was like they caught the one change up I threw. Um, no, I, it was mainly sinkers. Uh, two seam fastballs got me to the big leagues. And uh, yeah, so for me, it didn't matter what hit was up there. I'm going with my strengths, you know, and hopefully, you know, my strengths are better than theirs. Right. So you're more of an east west type of guy relying on movement and keeping the, the baseball in the same plane and have them going in different directions. Exactly. Keeping the ball down. Yeah. For me, it was, it was a very fine line of chopper ground ball or taking my head off. So. Okay. So what are some other interests uh, you had besides baseball? Uh, no, nah, nothing. No, I'm just <laughs> nothing. kidding. No. Uh, well, the older I get, the more golf I'm playing. Um, okay. Uh, so yeah, I love to play golf. Um, I can't afford to play every day, but I play as much as I can. Um, big movie guy, you know, a uh, family guy more than anything, you know, I mean, it's kind of cliche and kind of boring, but you know, my, my fun times are, you know, spending time with my, my daughters and my wife watching shows at night and relaxing. So we're kind of a laid back family. Yeah. It must've been a fun Christmas you had the other day then. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was a great time. Yeah. So what, so I know I'm not going to get like maybe a straight answer here, but what is your favorite movie? You do mention you're a movie guy. Yeah, that's not a fair question. It's um, never. Yeah, I, I mean, there's just too many. I mean, you know, I, I guess I should go off like if if I'm going to play a couple of movies for somebody knowing that they're going to enjoy them. Uh, you know, Count of Monte Cristo is, is one of my favorites of all time. I mean, if I'm looking for, you know, drama, a little bit of action type deal. Uh, I used to be a, a big, you know, romantic nut, you know, uh, <laughs> for chick flicks. I mean, they don't make them anymore. They're, they're just not as good as they used to be. But no. uh um, but comedy is all day long, you know, anchor right. man, anything, anything Adam Sandler or, you know, Will, Will Ferrell. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm it's, it's too hard to put it down to one, but I used to love Tom Hanks movies. Um, yeah. you know, and he's made a few decent ones recently, but yeah, I used to, I went, every movie that he, that came out with him, I was in love with. So like, you're talking about like big Starsky and Hutch, uh, and obviously Forrest yeah. Gump is up there every time. Yeah. Forrest Gump, Castaway. I mean, yeah, you name it. So let me ask you this. If they were to make a movie about Justin Heisman, who would be playing you? Which actor would you want to play yourself? <laughs> well, I used to ask my wife. It's always a running joke. When I can't stand it when, when they have actors who can't throw a ball. Like they're, they're, like they're uncoordinated, yes. you know? Yes. I mean, like it's just, I don't know why. Maybe, I don't know. I'm sure other pro players or, or baseball players, you know, it bothers them too. You know, it's kind of an insult to your craft a little yeah. bit. But Kevin Costner, had, you know, he, he he could throw the ball, you know, a little bit in in, in his movies for Love of the Game and uh, Field of Dreams. So uh, he's looking older, though. So that's going to I don't know if that's going to work anymore. But uh, yeah, in, in his golden day, Kevin Costner would, would probably be good just because he could throw a ball and look like a pitcher. Yeah, yeah and you're right. I can't, There's some baseball movies I can't stand because they'll hit like a grounder. You can tell it's a grounder off the bat. Then the next thing you know, it's flying over right. the wall going about 460. Right. Yeah. But so, I can't remember the, the catcher in, in for love of the game. I remember he caught, he caught a pop-up and it was the, it was the worst. It was John <laughs> C. Riley. Rattles. Yes. It was like, ah, oh, I mean, he's hilarious and a good actor, but I was like, oh my goodness. When he caught that ball, I was like, we could have cut that one. <laughs> um, so another question is, in your opinion, what is the best ballpark food? Ballpark food? Yeah. Ah. Uh, Man, um, obviously, if you go to White Sox, I mean, they got the beef everywhere. But, I mean, a good ballpark hot dog that's, you know, huge, super thick. And, you know, yeah. there's just nothing. It, you can get it somewhere else. It just doesn't taste the same, you know. No. So, I guess that. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Just, you can't go to a baseball field and not have a hot dog. Um, but I will say, if you go to Cincinnati, don't get the Skyline Chili if you want to be miserable for the rest of the game. I'm just going to say that out loud. Yeah. Why would you, why would you do that? That's, I that's not a good idea. <laughs> maybe like towards the end of the game, but never at the, like the beginning of the middle. That's well, just there's a lot of bathrooms nearby. So I guess you're okay there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's it for the fun questions. So do you have any messages that you want to say to the Lake County fans that are listening to this podcast about the uh, upcoming season? You know, I'm, I'm super excited. I mean, when I coached the Oilman, it was a good time. Oil City Stadium is a good atmosphere, um, you know, but I live in Crown Point. And so when Ralph, the owner, um, approached me with this idea, 
I immediately I was like, oh, this, this could be really great. You know, Crown Point loves its baseball. The youth programs are just blowing up everywhere. Um, you know, I'm, I'm partnering with Great Lakes Sports Hub and they do an awesome job with their youth and they're right across the street from where we're going to be playing. And so partnerships like that uh, are just growing, it seems like all the time. Uh, as people are starting to hear more about us and what you know what we're doing, and and uh, I know there's a lot of announcements, including team name coming up soon. Um, but there's just a lot of people that just want to get on board with this because they just love their baseball here. So I'm really excited yeah. to see uh, the atmosphere. You know that the team is going to create. It's going to be a lot of fun. You know, um, it sounds like the goal is is more minor league where they really care about the fans, having a good right. experience, and uh, watching good baseball, but also, you know, take the kids and the family and have a good time and everybody, you know, gets a, a good experience out of it. So I'm, I'm excited to see, uh, you know, how the summer goes and, and the future of uh, baseball here, Lake County, Crown Point. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree when you said that baseball is a huge deal here. And people think of Indiana, they think basketball. But I don't know what it is with us region rats up here. It's all baseball. When summertime comes yeah. around, that's all you find. And it, it's great. Right. Well, there's so, uh, just, there's a million baseball, softball fields in this town. I mean, there's just the youth. I mean, these kids are going to jump on this and, and see some of their heroes that they grew up with watching it at the high school, local high schools and colleges. I mean, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Eventually, as we keep getting more talented players, the roster is looking really good to start off. Um, some great players. And I can't wait for the fans to get to know these guys in future podcasts. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we're, you know, so far so good with the roster. and. Um, you know, these things take time uh, to, to fill up. And uh, but, we're, yeah, we are looking for as much local talent as we can. We've already got some com commits from guys who played in the league last year on, on other teams that had very good summers and, and good college careers so far um, who just want to come and play in Crown Point because they're excited as well. So looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, too. And thanks again for joining us in the first ever episode. And thanks for listening to the fans who tuned in. We'll see you on future podcasts. I'm Andrew Mile with Justin Heisman, and we'll see you next time.